Hi. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give a detailed overview of my new truck. So I do a walk around, exterior, interior, powertrain, uh, all that stuff, things I like, don't like. And, and then I do a couple polls, uh, zero to 60, zero to 75. And I've plotted those out so you can kind of see the curve. I'll, I'll share those and talk about it. And fuel offset, meaning is the price of the diesel worth it? I've plotted those out as well. I have an answer for you. Um, and then a really poor sound system check where I used my cell phone microphone to try and capture the sound. Uh, I can do another one of those with higher quality microphones if anyone wants. But uh, that is what this video will be about. So uh, here we go. Thanks. It's a 2022 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 Bison Edition, um, white with the extended cab, obviously four-wheel drive. It has the 2.8 liter Duramax diesel motor um, with a six-speed automatic transmission. I've owned it for about two weeks now. It had 5,800 miles when I bought it and I had it shipped to Arizona from Florida. I've driven it about 650 miles, about a tank and a little bit. I bought it because although the 2023 model is coming out in about two weeks, or at least they'll reveal the configurations, I've been looking at these for a long time and I bought the 22 because I'm not convinced they will offer uh, the extended cab in this ZR2 trim package and I'd be fine with the gasoline engine the turbo four-cylinder that is likely to make its way into this lineup um, but I did not want to do a V6 gas engine because uh, 20 miles per gallon is I don't know if I'd be happy with that and I don't do a lot of rallying in the desert so I like the torque uh, so I was trying to buy one of these new, uh, and I worked with our local dealership and I learned, I've actually placed an order for, for a extended cab diesel, the ZR2 and thousand dollar deposit, which a couple weeks later, they informed me that GM, uh, no longer would take orders for the diesel, but they could get it in a gas version, which was sad. I... I fig figured I'd pretty much give up on this, and uh, as a last-ditch Hail Mary effort, I kind of scoured the dealerships around the country and found, no joke, the truck that I had specced out exactly. I mean, down to the black emblems and the diesel exhaust tuck and the floor mats and everything with 5,800 miles, and I paid a good amount for it had to ship it out here but uh, it's it's what I want so that's why I bought it uh, touched on the powertrain already I I really really like it uh, a lot of people say it's slow I don't I don't think so before this truck I had a 20 2009 two-wheel drive Colorado extended cab with a four-cylinder gas engine and a manual transmission And this is about a thousand pounds heavier with the same amount of horsepower in it. It'll get up and go faster than that truck did. So power is adequate. Uh, exterior, I think it's, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I don't have the quad cab because I use my bed a lot and I just think they don't look as good. So as far as looks, uh, tremendous. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. I love it. Uh, interior. So, give a quick review of the interior. The AEV package gets you, I don't know if that's custom leather or if they just embroider the headrest, but very nice leather. Um, decent plastic, about the same as my other truck, and it, it holds up good. It hasn't lasted yet, but I wouldn't need anything other than this. You know, I bought a truck. I intend to use it as a truck 
and my last truck didn't have half this stuff. This, this backup camera is great. I mean, a six inch screen or so is really all I need. Um, really cool thing I haven't seen on other videos is you can scroll over and turn on the backup camera, even when you're driving down the freeway, uh, which is, which is pretty awesome. Uh, visibility is, is good. It's okay. It's not, not the worst. Uh, this little screen down here is, is, is pretty great. Um, my hood's open. I'm going to show you the power plant. Uh, this is the interior section. So AEV floor mats. I mean, you can check out another video if you want a detailed look at this. Overall, it's all I need. A little half door, a little less space back here than my last truck. I think it's a little taller, the floor, but you know, great for a couple duffel bags, backpacks. Yeah, you know, a little dog could fit back there. Sliding rear window is a plus. Okay, so that's the interior. Let's see if I can get the hood open. Drop my keys on the floor. This bra is coming off today. Get to why in a moment. So I don't know, I have a whole lot to say about this. I don't know much about it, but 2.8 liter diesel. It's got cylinder deactivation, which fine. Uh, you know, air cleaner, fuses, battery. I don't know where the AC compressor is, but it works really, really, really good. That's the oil filter, I think. So never dealt with one of those before. Dipstick way in the back. I'm not gonna pull that out. Um, no issues with overheating or anything yet. So, so far so good. And let's see what's next on my book. Drivability on the road. Uh, really good. I haven't, it, it handles like a Colorado. You know, it's, it's tight, tight steering, uh, nimble, narrow. Well, it's, it's wider than your standard Colorado, about four inches, but uh, it feels like a small truck, but it's tall. It, uh, well, taller than my old one. So good visibility on the road, handles awesome. Uh, I'm running these BFG KO2 all-terrains, E-rated, at about 40 PSI cold, and they're stiff, but I, they're, they're tough, you know, and so kind of gets to the next section, off-road. I haven't done a whole lot of off-roading in this truck yet, but my first impressions is it, it wheels kind of like a, I don't know, like a 4Runner or an SUV where it's point and shoot, it'll plow up anything. But I had a I had a couple Jeeps before this, and it, it doesn't it doesn't hold a candle to uh, to the float of a Wrangler off road. It it's stiffer, but you know you get that back in 50 different aspects of the truck. So I mean, it's a good off roader. Uh, previous owner mods. So previous owner tinted the heck out of the windows, which is hard to see at night. Uh, incandescent bulbs don't don't help and he put a bra on the truck I'm gonna take that off because uh, it looks cool but I think the paint will fade unevenly in the high UV we have out here and you know the rain periodically so that's coming off today uh, he put a toolbox in the bed which awesome never had one I really like it it eats up your bed space, unfortunately, but you know, your toolbox, your funnels, spare diff, uh, hitch receiver or hitch, you know, trailer hitch, all that stuff you want with you, recovery gear that you don't want stolen and it's oily and greasy, so you don't want to put it in your cab. Uh, great in the locking toolbox. Uh, he put a blue, blue American flag on there. I think that's for police officers, so. Um, Good deal. Uh, what else did he do? The tires, I think he did the tires. Um, and I think that's about it for the mods they did. I Mods I've done, I need to get a winch on there. That's the next, but the first mod that I did in another video is these Dayton Fab shock skids, which are a must if you're doing off-roading. Uh, that's about all the mods that I can think of. 
Yep, that's all I wrote down. Uh, so there's a lot to love about this truck. Dislikes, lighting, uh, need LEDs, in my opinion. Towing, I've got a 5,000 pound Bobcat 773 skid loader in the back and it weighs 5,000 pounds. So it's pushing it. I could drag it around town, but I'm not willing to exceed the towing capacity by the weight of the trailer uh, in, in a brand new truck with a car transmission, basically. It's just not smart, takes the life out of it. And dislike, emission control systems. Enough said. EGR, DPF, DEF. Uh, the regen is, is really annoying. And so it'll do that maybe once a tank. And it doesn't, it does, well, I've never seen a, an indicator turn on telling you it's doing it. You see your MPGs drop by 20% as it injects fuel right into the exhaust manifold. And that burns out the carbon filter in theory. Uh, and that goes on for a while, you know, 30 minutes of that. People say the idle increases, that smells, and MPG hit. So that's that's kind of obnoxious, but it seems to work. Uh, how is it held up? So far so good. I haven't had any problems with it, but I've only owned it for you know, two weeks. I love it. Uh, it's everything I want in a truck and so much more. You know, you get what you pay for for this, in my opinion. Uh, you buy a truck, you don't necessarily want all the bells and whistles, but it's got a fair amount of those. So my favorite is the remote start. We'll do a, we'll start it up. So to do that, press the lock button and then, you, well, we'll do it again. So get back here by the exhaust. So press the lock button and then hold this button. It kind of ticks a little bit on startup, but it sounds like a diesel. And then hold the button again to turn it off. And I think that's all I have to say about it right now. If you're looking at one of these, I don't know, 2023 model might be, might be pretty great. And if they keep the diesel or offer the extended cab in the ZR2 trim, I think there's a very small chance I'll trade in for a new one, but uh, it'll have to be really, really worth it. So thanks for watching. As a bonus, there's the Jeep I used to drive. Got a lot of problems with that, a lot of experience with that. Uh, rebuilt the whole engine, pulled it out using that hoist. Uh, salvaged a ton of stuff, a lot of mods. And if, if you're interested in you know, my experiences with this Jeep, I've got a lot on that, a lot of parts too. So let me know. Um, I think that's it. Oh, I've been using this in my fuel. I don't know if it helps, but you know, maybe it'll extend the life of the emissions control stuff. Okay, we're gonna do a rolling full throttle acceleration. I'm getting on the freeway here. Um, so I'm gonna get it to 50 and take it up to 75 and we'll time it. So from a rolling start, 45. Okay, I'm gonna tell you when, okay, it's floored. Oh. Yeah, no, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah, you get 50 to 60. Maybe. Well, we'll try again, zero to 60 um, on a closed road. All right, I might be able to do 65 to 70. So, all right, three, two, one, go, it's floored. Yeah, well, that's not bad. We'll get that on a plot here in a second. Three, two, one, go. Floored it. There, it took off. Traction control kicked in. Getting up there. And we're at 60. So, not bad. 
see if I can take it up to 75. So foot still floored. Yep. Here's the data from those three pulls I just did. The orange and blue lines are those rolling accelerations on the freeway and the black line is the zero to 75 on a closed course that was straight with a slight incline. Uh, it, it appears logarithmic. So for the first 10 seconds, you get from zero to 50 and the next 10 seconds you get from 50 to 75. So your acceleration is cut in half after about 50. Um, I took the difference between each point, so the slope of the line, and plotted that on this yellow line to represent acceleration on the second axis. And you can see as your time goes on or your speed increases, the acceleration rolls off. And that's, that's what people are saying when they'll say after about 50 miles an hour, you put your foot down and there's nothing there. Um, it's not nothing, but it's probably not going to compare to the V6. And I don't have data for that, but I would love to overlay that truck on, on this plot. So if anyone has a V6 gas Colorado and you can send me a video of your zero to 75, uh, I can, I can overlay that on this plot and I'll bet someone out there is interested to see how these two trucks compare. So my cruise control is set to 70 and you can see I'm cooking along about mid twenties in the MPG just on the freeway here. Uh, not, not bad. I, I think you can get a little bit better MPGs if you don't use cruise and I run on a forum, treat it like there's an egg between your foot and the throttle. Um, I think that's a good way to drive this truck. But it's happy anywhere from 50 to 70. You, you get pretty good, pretty good mileage. You can see I've averaged about 25 MPGs over the, over the last 50 miles. And let's see here. Yeah, 92 miles got me at 25, and then the lifetime of the truck, I've owned it 500 miles, just over 25. I can't complain, I think that includes one regen where I was on that same stretch of freeway and it dropped down to high teens, which is frustrating, but it, I don't think it tells you either unless the regen keeps getting canceled and then it'll tell you, hey, I need to do a regen. Um, but other than that, I've read that it, it won't indicate when it's doing one, so you have to go off of sound, RPMs, fuel economy, and uh, the, the smell. Some people say they can smell it. What I want to show with this chart is an estimate at cost of ownership, strictly looking at fuel between both trucks, the gas and diesel versions of the Colorado. So I've taken the current prices of both fuels, 4.5 and $5.5 .5 per gallon, uh, estimated MPG 20 and 25 and then the offset price for the diesel option approximately $3,500 and then I extrapolate that cost out over mileage and what you see on the chart is the orange line is cost of diesel ownership the black line is cost of gas and at 700,000 miles that's when you break even meaning the fuel cost for both trucks is the same. And after that point, the diesel uh, it becomes cheaper in the long run. Now, 700,000 miles is a lot. And at that point, you would have paid $157,000 in fuel alone. Now, this, this doesn't account for maintenance, emissions fluids, filters, um, at other diesel and gas specific intervals. This does not factor in fluctuations in fuel price. It also doesn't factor in other benefits of the diesel over the gas, such as hopefully longevity, resale value, and torque, horsepower differences. So this is looking at it strictly financially. And really the takeaway here for me is it's, it's a wash. So you'll probably get that $3,500 investment back when you go to sell the truck for resale and in the long term it really doesn't make a difference uh, for for cost of fuel alone because I don't think you'll get 700,000 miles out of the truck 
before you sell it. Uh, and in my case, the, the benefits of higher torque and hopefully longevity outweigh the, the little bit of cost I would save by getting the gas engine. So the diesel specific option has a exhaust brake, which just closes a butterfly valve in the, in the tailpipe, as I understand. And I've never driven a truck with a, an exhaust brake and um, I've heard it's not as good on this truck. Makes sense, it's not putting out as much exhaust, but I like it. You know, if, if you're getting off the freeway, uh, the faster the engine's revving, the more effective the brake is. And you know, I've found if, if you just lightly tap the brake, uh, it, it does a good job of slowing down the truck. So, you know, saves, saves your brakes. Um, I use it even if I am not trailering. I don't do a whole lot of towing. So I, I like it. And I, I've read it, it does not negatively or adversely impact the, the system. So a little bit of back pressure in the manifold, it is, is not gonna, not gonna hurt your engine. So that's good. Um, another feature on the truck is the, is the def. And see if I can get this, I've had it. I think it's when I got the truck 500 miles ago, so there's a fuel filter life. That's another thing. You're gonna have to change that out. Two, two filters, I believe once every five or 10,000 miles, no big deal. Um, engine hours, transmission temperature, trailer brake, integrated trailer brake controller, which you see that, that's cool. Uh, four wheel drive screen. So I'm at 69% remaining def, and I think I started at about 80% 500 miles ago. So 5,000 miles will get you, you know, a $20 fill up of def. Um, no big deal as long as it works. Uh, you got your speed, two trips, uh, fuel range, which is exceptional, 500 miles, no problem. Oil life, tire pressure, I run the E range tires at you know 40 psi cold and usually get up about 44 45 um, when they're hot uh, it's really bassy but it gets loud so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can hit play here cool so I can hit play and I'm gonna turn it up in a minute here but you can see the equalization I'm setting. I got the bass down and the treble and mid up, and then I like keeping it a little bit um, back, the you know a little bit back from the center. I think that sounds the best. And uh, I'll turn it up here in a minute. Here we go. So obviously um, it's just a cell phone microphone, so you're not gonna get the best quality audio, but it gets loud. I wouldn't have it over half volume. I don't think I ever have. And this is coming across Bluetooth. Um, so I don't know, it probably, you know, 44 kilohertz or something. Um, not great, but not bad. I'm, I'm happy with it. I wouldn't mess with the speakers. Again, the, the high range and mid range is, is kind of dwarfed out by the, the, the lows, but it's fine. You can, you can adjust that with the touch screen. Um, so I'd give, it a, I'd give it a thumbs up and I think that's it for the audio.